Hi, I'm Dr. Jose Antonio. I am the CEO of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. I'm also a researcher at Nova Southeastern University in Davie, Florida. And today I want to talk to you about creatine, specifically creatine monohydrate, since that is the primary form of the supplement that we've all probably used. Now, what is creatine? Creatine is basically an amino acid derived substrate or fuel. It comes from methionine, arginine, and glycine. And creatine is found primarily really in your skeletal muscle. And what is it used for? Well, let's talk about uh, the dosing. Do you need to do a loading protocol for creatine? Well, it really depends on your goals. If you're currently not taking creatine, doing that loading protocol for, for one week of roughly 20 grams per day is certainly something you should do. If you're currently taking creatine, then you don't need to load on it at all. You just stay on a maintenance dose of roughly three to six grams per day, and that should be sufficient. Well, what does creatine do to lean body mass? Well, what's exciting about creatine is that there's probably not a single supplement that has more research behind it in terms of elevating lean body mass than creatine monohydrate. We know from probably well over 300 studies that if you consume creatine monohydrate in a dose of roughly five grams a day for two months, maybe three months, you'll get a significant increase in lean body mass. And with that increase in lean body mass, an increase in strength and in, even in muscular endurance. Does creatine promote a gain in fat mass? Well, what's interesting about creatine is that you actually don't gain any fat from it. It's purely, you might say, an anabolic fuel or anabolic substrate. It does promote just an increase in lean body mass with no effect on fat mass. What about creatine for special populations like children and the elderly? Well, this is where it gets kind of interesting. When you're dealing with the elderly, uh, particularly since losing muscle, which is what we call sarcopenia, since losing muscle with age is such an issue, it's probably important that older people consume creatine because there is data that show that in, in 60 to 80 year olds that creatine monohydrate can indeed help increase lean body mass and strength. So that helps with activities of daily living. What about creatine for kids? And this is where it gets a little bit more controversial. There's actually data in teenage athletes that if you give them creatine, they actually perform better. And this was in a specific group of what are called fin swimmers. They actually perform better uh, after loading for a week on creatine. And there's also data that show that in kids with traumatic brain injury, that creatine will help protect the brain or at least help you recover faster. And they were giving these kids really quite high doses. So is it safe for, for kids as well as for older adults? Really, the answer to that is yes. The safety data on creatine is, is unparalleled. It's one of the safest supplements out there. What about creatine for, let's say, vegetarians or vegans? They actually will benefit the most and the reason they benefit the most is because they typically don't get any creatine in their diet because creatine is typically found in meats and in fish. So if you don't eat meat or fish, the only way you're gonna get creatine, at least uh, exogenously, is to supplement. And they're the ones who are gonna get the, get the most bang for the buck, so to speak, because their, their endogenous levels or internal levels are so low to begin with. So it helps them quite a bit. I think another area of research that's cool with creatine is the effects on brain function. If you look at some of the data on memory, uh, taking creatine monohydrate will improve memory and, and, and again in particular in, in those who are vegetarian or vegan because their normal intake of creatine is really, uh, it's really quite insufficient. Now what about responders versus non-responders? Who responds to creatine? Well, we know this, that if you have a lot of fast twitch fibers, or what are called type two fibers, that you seem to be a better responder than someone who has a lot of type one or slow twitch fibers. The primary difference between your type one and type two fibers, let me give you athlete examples. Your type one fiber is primarily slow twitch. It has a lot of endurance, so you see that in marathon runners, for instance. The type two fibers are what we call fast twitch, and you see that a lot in, in for instance, sprinters. Most of us are probably a mixture of it. Uh, people who do bodybuilding, again, are probably a mixture of it, but again, if you're at one extreme, which is type one or slow, versus the other extreme, which is type two or fast, you'll excel in those events. What about the question of when you should uh, take creatine? What's interesting is I actually did a, a timing study on creatine that showed at least initially taking it post-workout works better than pre-workout. Now there's a caveat to that. I think if you're on creatine chronically, let's say you've been taking it for years and years and years, it probably does not matter if you take it in the morning, the evening, pre-workout or post-workout, as long as you get your roughly five grams per day. Now, if you cycle on and off it, and let's say you're competing or preparing for an athletic event, then probably it would make sense to take it post-workout. So at least, you know, there's at least some suggestive data to show that might be a little bit better than pre-workout. So is timing an issue? It's an issue if you're not taking it regularly. If you're taking it regularly, it's probably not that big an issue. 
For more information on sports nutrition and supplements like you just heard, come back to bodybuilding.com. <laughs>